We got two commits for the Florida Gators football team this weekend. Who's next? And we'll wrap up by talking about Dorian Finney-Smith because, golly, he went off yesterday. Only here on Locked On Gators. You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. Happy Monday. I'm Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find my written work with Whole 9 Sports before getting into today's content. Just to ask you to like, subscribe wherever you're listening, leave a comment, review, whatever it is. Let me know how I can make the show better for you and it's greatly appreciated we're getting into today's content where we're talking about the two gators commits that we got this weekend because it's just weird timing or not even weird timing it's just funny timing where um over the past month or so i started getting dms and youtube comments that were like billy napier's only got one commit for the 2023 class billy napier can't get can't get these commits in when he thought it happened with spring game billy napier can't get these commits um should we be worried when should we be worried how worried should we be and well (laughs) things have changed because the florida gators have gone from having just one commit a few weeks ago to now having four 2023 commits which i mean that's something to be excited about it like like if you're the type where you were like we only have one commit should we be excited or where you're like me and it's like well, until it's signed, they're not Gators, so don't get too excited. It's still something that you should be excited about where Florida is starting to kind of pick up a little bit of momentum in recruiting here and, and adding these names to the 2023 class, which so many people have been a bit worried about. Uh, but that that gets addressed now. Um, the first commit came from Nigeria Harris, the interior offensive lineman, six foot three. 335 pounds which is insane like, like i realize it's just just saying the height and weight it's kind of hard to picture but that is a massive weight for someone that is six foot three like like that is he's a he's big <laughs> i'll tell you that he's out of img the four star billy napier's second img commit since taking over for the florida gators which is obviously big because you know i, I spoke about it on friday's show with john garcia um florida has had the img curse where they haven't gotten img players but billy napier came in and then his first recruiting class recruiting class for the 2022 cycle got kamari wilson of course the safety that we all know and love and are super excited that he's a gator and kamari even the other day was saying i want florida to be not just a me thing i want to i want to just have img run through gainesville um well, Florida has made a little bit of progress towards that because Florida got another IMG player again in Nigeria Harris. Uh, I'm very curious for Nigeria Harris to see how he's going to fit because I've seen minimal uh, tape from him. By minimal, I mean I've I watched two games of him. Um, and, and I'm a little curious because he doesn't look like a super fluid mover to me. He's also 335 pounds, which I said is massive for six foot three. Um, and I think he's a fantastic mover for someone who's six foot three, 335 pounds. I'm not super certain he's just in general a very great mover uh, compared to other lighter players. But at the same time, also, like, I highly doubt he's going to be 335 pounds and be in the same exact shape that he is when he gets to Gainesville. He's probably going to maybe trim down a little bit, or even if he keeps that weight, he's going to convert fat to muscle um so it's interesting but I, I am interested to see him work because again this is more of a a wide zone style offense that we're at least expecting to see in Gainesville so there's going to be a lot more movement along the offensive line so it, it, I'm a little interested to see how Harris is going to fit in here again if he if he maintains that same height weight and that that same body type but again I doubt that'll happen because he's still a teenager and he will grow and he will change and he may, he might be taller. He might be lighter. He might be heavier. He won't be shorter. Um, 
I, that's what I'm saying. Um, maybe maybe he's actually six one and he weighs in at that when he gets to Gainesville. Um, but you know, I'm interested to see how someone with that weight and that size will work in this offense. Uh, we're going to. I I would expect John Garcia to talk about this class as well or these commits as well um, later this week when he's on Locked On Gators. But then there was another commit on Saturday afternoon where Creed Whitmore committed to the Florida Gators, which is something that's very exciting. Three-star wide receiver coming to Florida. He's a quarterback in high school. He will be moving to wide receiver for the Florida Gators. Um, that's not new. That's not surprising. Like That happens all the time with... Uh, with high school QBs moving to receiver. It happens all the time with college QBs moving to receiver. It's a very, very common thing that, I mean, again, shouldn't be surprising at all. He is the younger brother of current Florida Gator wide receiver, Trent Widmore, which will be exciting. Um, I am certain that I am going to accidentally refer to the wrong Whitmore incessantly. Uh, even, Even after Trent's gone, I will be calling Creed Trent accidentally at some point. That's just, it's going to happen. I can just, I can just tell you, like, it's just one of those things where it's like, do I hate that I do it? Yeah, I hate that I do it, but I I can't really change that. It's just something I could, I could hope for the best with. Uh, Creed had 18 offers, including late offers over the past month and a half or two from Miami, Michigan, and Penn State, but of course went to Florida or committed to Florida. Uh, he's someone that, I also don't expect to be much of a contributor early on, again, because he's going to be changing from QB to wide receiver, and, and he's great with the ball on his hands, but can can you get open against college defenders? So I think that's why we don't expect much from him, but also he could be the type where it's like, well, we'll throw him in the backfield and have some fun with it. We'll j- just we'll, we'll mess around, throw him screens, have him run the ball, do, do these fun things. Uh, so so things could change and things could get interesting with Creed. Uh, but again, I wouldn't expect him to contribute early on. That's just not something that I would think would happen. Uh, it also looks like Florida is pretty heavily targeting wide receivers for 2023 and beyond. So I would expect to see more talent added to the room as well. But we're about to talk about who could be next, including a, a wide receiver and an offensive tackle. So we're sticking along the offensive line and wide receiver route. Uh, but first, I'm talking to you guys about Bill Barr because NFL Draft is done. It is May. Cinco de Mayo's past. May the 4th be with you is gone. Summer's coming up. I got vacation in approximately six weeks, so I got to get in shape. And I'm doing it by adding Bill Barr into my diet plan because Bill Barr, perfect for me. I've got a sweet tooth. It, it's coated in 100% chocolate, so it knocks that out. I, I eat a lot of sugar because I have a sweet tooth. Just four net carbs with Bill Barr. With Bill Barr. I need to eat more protein. 17 grams of protein in a built bar, just 130 calories. I'm not a calorie counter, so that doesn't matter as much to me, but it does to a lot of people. So that's big for you. Uh, you could throw out the hidden stashes, the recent the desk drawer, Kit Kat in the cupboard, Swedish fish. I like Swedish fish, but can't eat them now because I got vacation coming up. Built Bar is always coming out with new limited time flavors, so you'll never get bored. Use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off of your next order with Locked15 at Built or BuiltBar.com. Thanks again for making Locked Night Gators your first listen of the day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to podcasts. We're talking about who could be next in the Florida Gators uh, commit ring, I guess we'll call it. First up, we're talking about wide receiver Aiden Mizell, 6'2", 180-pound wide receiver, a four-star out of Orlando, would give Florida three pure wide receiver commits for the 2023 class. Blake Alderman, shout out Blake, Blake Alderman made this crystal ball prediction, and it's important to note that because Blake has made 10 crystal ball predictions that have been decided so far. He's made a lot more crystal ball predictions, but only 10 have been decided so far. For the 2023 class, he's been right on eight of them, so he's shooting an 80% clip so far for the 2023 class. And, I mean, Aiden Mazzell also, fun fact, if you didn't know this, uh, his mom was a sprinter at Florida. So he's got familial ties with the university already. Hopefully he will be a Gator. I, I would love to add more talent to the wide receiver room. I don't care how many people you add. Cream will rise to the top. That's that's the approach we're taking from now on. Uh, just, just 
add talent, cream will rise to the top. We'll figure it out later. That's that's what we're doing here. Next up is offensive tackle Bryce Lovett, a three-star offensive tackle from Rockledge, Florida. Once again, Blake Alderman, the crystal ball man here. Uh, he crystal balled Lovett to Florida. And Andrew Ivins, the 24-7 sports uh, Southeast recruiting analyst, who, by the way, also did uh, crystal ball Bryce Lovett. He also has not missed on a 2023 commit yet. Again, like Blake Alderman, he's made crystal ball predictions that haven't hit yet, but or that haven't uh, committed yet, but he has not missed. So I'm just pointing that out. He hasn't missed yet. He's shooting a pretty hot clip. So that's great for, that's looking great, at least for Florida. Uh, his commitment is set, by the way. Bryce Lovett is commit is set to commit uh, in one week from today. So one week from today, we could have another commit added to the 2023 Florida Gators recruiting class. I'm excited that next Monday could be very big for the Florida Gators with Bryce Lovett adding, adding an offensive lineman here. And I mean, look, he, he's a big dude. Billy Napier, Rob Sale, and Darnell Stapleton all put value in these these big, burly offensive linemen. We've seen that happen. They want these big guys that can move quite a bit, and that's what he can do. So Bryce Lovett, 330 pounds. He's a tank. He's someone that, again, I mean, he's been recently crystal balled to Florida. He commits in a week from today. So we could see Bryce Lovett in Gainesville next year, but we could see him as a Gator commit in a week and then looking at, at just like broad broad spectrum dbs here uh because dbs is interesting right now because florida has crystal ball predictions for three highly highly touted uh defensive backs cormani mclean aj harris and tony mitchell mclean has crystal ball predictions from blake alderman who uh yeah there you go blake alderman is there again so we got that. So McLean has predictions from Blake Alderman and Josh Newberg, who is a Florida State insider, but he does have Florida predictions. Um, obviously, he's still a recruiting specialist. So yeah, he's going to have those. So we got two crystal ball predictions for Cormani McLean to Florida. AJ Harris has crystal ball predictions for Florida whew, from quite a few people. Uh, we got Rusty Mansell, Steve Wiltfong, who, by the way, has been insanely accurate for the 2023 recruiting class. Zach Blostein, Jacob Rudner, who we've talked about before. He hasn't missed yet. He's two for two on crystal ball predictions that have committed. And Blake Alderman again. We're just going to keep talking about Blake. Uh, but actually, we don't talk about Blake right here. Tony Mitchell has Florida crystal ball predictions from Zach Blostein, who we just mentioned also has A.J. Harris with a crystal ball prediction and Josh Newberg, who we also just mentioned has uh Cormani McLean crystal balled to come to Gainesville. So, so there's a lot of smoke around these DBs coming to Gainesville and becoming Florida Gators. Obviously things could change. Like I said, I've mentioned this before. Um, for example, if, if Cormani commits, then we could see AJ Harris go, I don't want to come to Gainesville anymore now. Like Cormani's the, the corner, the highly touted 2023 corner they're bringing in, whatever it might be, even though obviously multiple corners play and multiple guys can play consistently and can play significant snaps and things like that. But it could change things is what I am saying. Um, but again, I mean, you're getting the chance to be coached by Corey Raymond, who uh, he's he's just pumped so many defensive backs into the NFL where I think it's kind of silly to not want to come work with him. So DB, Florida, DBU, we're here, baby. Uh, Tony Mitchell also has five crystal balls to Bama or LSU, but those haven't been updated since 2020. And guess who was at LSU in 2020? Corey Raymond. And guess who is at Florida now? Corey Raymond, so that that could be just another reason for Tony Mitchell to come to Gainesville. You can count those as crystal balls for Florida. And we could just say, yay, we're winning. Um, but of course, nothing is uh, nothing is set in stone yet. But th things could change rather quickly, I'd say. Uh, so it's something to be excited about. Florida's got a lot of guys that are kind of getting close to their commitment dates. We got May, June, going to be a little bit busy for recruitment for recruitment uh, and commitments, and it's going to be very exciting for the 2023 class. Again, nothing is set in stone until that letter of intent is signed, but 
as far as a commit goes, we can still be excited about commits. Like, I think that, you know, if if you get a commit from a player, like if you really like Najee Harris or Creed Whitmore and they committed to Florida this weekend, you could be stoked about that. Like, I'll, I'm excited for them to get there. I don't care. Accumulate talent. That's what I want. Accumulate talent. That is all we need to do. Accumulate talent. Build talent. It is a talent acquisition business. I forgot, but I haven't brought that one out in a while. But we're about to shift gears to basketball, talking about the NBA, because Dorian Finney-Smith, sheesh, oh man, yesterday he cooked. But first, I'm going to talk to you about Bet Online because it's NBA playoffs time, obviously. I'm talking about Dorian Finney-Smith. Also, if you've been betting Dorian Finney-Smith, his over on three-pointers made, congratulations, because that has been as free money as you can get. Uh, so betonline.net. That's where you want to do that. It's your number one source for all of your sports betting information. It, it's just fantastic. I've been using Bet Online for five years. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just gonna go five years. I realize I keep going four, five, six, five years is where I'm just going. That's where I'm ballparking it. Uh, I couldn't be happier with it. Helped me make quite a lot of money. Helped me pay some bills, by the way. So that helps me. Uh, it's got so much, not just basketball, not just football, not just baseball, not even just sports. You can bet on reality TV, award shows, uh, it's just politics, economics, so much. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn all about the trends and action. Check out Bet Online. It's where the game starts. To wrap up today's show, we are talking about Dorian Finney Smith, who, if you've been watching the NBA playoffs, They've been dope, uh, primarily the Western Conference. I mean, Western Conference Western Conference playoffs, always the more entertaining matchups, I think. I think we could all agree with that one. Uh, but there was a very exciting matchup in the Dallas Mavericks and the Phoenix Suns, and that series is now tied at 2-2. Uh, spoiler alert, if, if, you, if you haven't seen it. Uh, but Dorian Finney-Smith has been incredibly efficient in these playoffs. The Dallas Mavericks have played 10 games in the playoffs so far. Dorian Finney-Smith has shot 50% or higher in seven of those 10 games so far. And yesterday in game four against the Suns, he kind of violated. He, he went off a little bit. Uh, Dorian had 24 points on eight of 13 shooting, eight for 12 from three. He also had eight rebounds and assists. And a steal is just a big night overall for Dorian Finney-Smith. And, I mean, the Dallas Mavericks played just pretty dang good defense throughout that game. And Chris Paul obviously fouled out. Foul trouble. Dorian Finney-Smith was talking a little trash afterwards in the postgame presser. They were like, oh, like, like, what about targeting Chris Paul and getting him to foul out? And Dorian Finney-Smith was essentially like, he's old. He's going to foul. <laughs> he's old. He can't keep up with us. He's going to foul. So, Earlier in the series, we saw the Suns go directly at Luka Doncic in the uh, fourth quarter of Game 2, I believe it was. Yeah, Game 2, because it was in Phoenix. Chris Paul and Devin Booker took turns. Um, and then we saw the Mavericks go at Chris Paul and kind of give kind of give the Suns a taste of their own medicine. Uh, but this is also huge for the Dallas Mavericks that Dorian Finney-Smith step up in, we, in Game 3. Uh, Jalen Brunson stepped up, and that's big because the plan so far for the Phoenix Suns this series has been... Pretty much, well, Luka is that entire offense. Like, like Luka's going to score the points. Luka's going to set people up for open shots. Luka's going to do all these things. Let Luka go off and contain everybody else because Luka is not going to outscore our entire team, which has been a sound strategy before. You know, the Dallas Mavericks don't really have an amazing supporting cast around Luka. They got guys, but not an amazing supporting cast. Then the series went to Dallas, and Jalen Brunson went off in Game 3, and then Dorian Finney-Smith violated in Game 4, its second game in Dallas. Uh, and it's also interesting to note because Dorian Finney-Smith is the only Florida Gator alum remaining in the Western Conference playoffs that plays. Uh, Chris Chioza is on a two-way contract with the Warriors, but he's been inactive during the playoffs, so... Yeah, means nothing. Uh, Dorian Finney-Smith, however, has been active in starting, and, he, and he's and he been that dude. He's looking like he could be that dude. So Dorian Finney-Smith is someone that I'm very excited to go. And again, he's just been shooting lights out. Like, that's the thing with him is, like, he is not usually a 24 points a game kind of guy. Like, like he's not a 20-point scorer. He's, like, a 10, 11 kind of guy where he's, he's going to do what he can. He's going to contribute, but he's more defense, rebounding, hustle, 
and just being a spot up shooter and usually spot up shooters get covered, but eight for 12 from three against the Suns yesterday shows that they didn't cover him and he shot 75% from three. So that is incredibly efficient. He, like he could have shot four for 12 and it's like, that's not the worst thing. Like 33% isn't awful. It's not great, but it's not awful. Um, so that's just in, insane to be like, yeah, like he's just been so good. And especially because, you know, in, in games one and two in this series, it was the, the Suns are going to win in four games because the Mavs have Luka and no one else helping him right now. But then Jalen Brunson, Dorian Finney Smith, things popped up and things picked up. And it's really cool uh, in the Eastern Conference playoffs, by the way. Still got Udonis Haslam, who, yes, is still playing. And Al Horford, who, yes, is still playing. Uh, they are maybe on a collision course for the Eastern Conference Finals, depending on how things shake out for their teams. Uh, I mean, throughout the rest of their current series. Um, it's also insane to me that if you're watching the early to mid-2010 Gators, like if we're watching them with Patrick Young, Scotty Wilbeckin, uh, Bradley Beal, Dorian Finney-Smith, just, just that range, obviously not all together, but just in that range. Uh, and you go, you see Dorian Finney-Smith, he's going to be a key piece and starter on an NBA playoff team in five, seven years. Um, I would have called you crazy. Like that would have been like, you should have been locked up for saying something like that. Because he was a good college player, but he was even in college. He was just like a hustle guy. He wasn't even a great shooter in college. Uh, but I never pictured him as a legitimately good NBA player. But here we are. It's playoffs time, and he's a hey, big time players make big time plays in big time moments, and that is exactly what he's doing. Thanks for making Lockdown Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free wherever you listen to the podcast. We'll be back tomorrow with more on your Florida Gators. Now make your second listen locked on NFL Draft. Ryan Tracy and former NFL cornerback Eric Crocker bring the NFL Draft to life every day with insight and analysis on college football prospects and NFL front offices. For Locked On Gators, I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. You can find all my written work with Whole9Sports. That is W-H-O-L-E-N-I-N-E Sports. And I will see you all tomorrow.